today let's talk about how to launch a podcast. It may seem pretty simple, but there's actually quite a few steps that need to go into the process. And we've done it so many times now that I wanted to make a video talking you through it because I think it's a useful thing to know how to do. And it's um, so even easier if you have a plan. <laughs> so you can use our plan. So I will give it to you now. I'm Joy Yule. I'm the owner of Winsome Marketing and Hire a Writer and Baby Got Backlink and the Academy of Continuing Education. And I have this YouTube channel to help marketers, content writers, and growth specialists do a better job. <laughs> so you'll find a lot of tools, a lot of resources, and a lot of how-to videos because I am here to help. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. What I'm going to do is basically give you a framework that we use um, for podcast launches. And it's kind of like a go-to-market framework, but it is extremely simplified and extremely tactical. So what you need to know if you want to launch a podcast is what it's going to take, right? And this needs to be measured in a pretty specific way, um, depend regardless of how big your business is, right? You need to know how much to budget for it, how much time it's going to take, what's a realistic timeline, all of that. So what I what we have on this go-to-market framework is pretty simple. You have it broken out into guests, right? So most podcasts have guests, most of the good ones anyway, right? Because you can then access additional audiences and things like that. So that's a very useful thing to do, like an interview-style podcast. Branding, you've got to be able to brand the podcast. You've got to have a name for it. You've got to have a look for it. You've got to have the thumbnail images, all the things. Ideas, right? What is going to be kind of the ongoing idea generation process? What are episodes going to be about? Are you going to serialize it? Are you going to have um, specific categories of content, build libraries, all those kind of things? You've got to have a plan for that. And then production, what kind of software are you going to use? How are you going to get it actually created, distributed across all the podcast channels and players and all that kind of thing? And then other graphics. So there's branding, which is the you know podcast itself and making sure that there's a name and an identity and it's recognizable and all of that. But then there's ongoing, right? In order to have a podcast listened to, you need to be marketing that podcast, which means you need additional clips and you need additional graphics and you need additional offers and things like that. So it's important that you think through that there needs to be a plan for that. And then thinking through distribution. So yes, the software you use will probably have a distribution mechanism in it, but then there needs to be additional, like, are you promoting it to your email list? Are you promoting it on social media? Are you doing DM campaigns? There's a lot of additional distribution methods that you need to be a part of podcast planning. So those are the big categories that you have to think through at first, non-negotiable. If you don't have a plan for any of that, you don't have a podcast. And podcasts become very overwhelming very fast, which is part of why this framework is useful to hopefully you and definitely useful to us. So what I like to do when I'm having this conversation with people who are like, I want to start a podcast, is we have a very simple conversation about what we need to do, what we will need to do, the thing that we need to do, <laughs> and then what it will take. What do we have to allocate for that? Because it's not just time and it's not just money. It's time and money and talent. You have to have people who are actually capable of doing some of the things that you want to do. The podcast market is competitive. If you are just now starting a podcast, you have to have your act together because it is not easy to do. It is not easy to maintain. And it's going to be hard to make some space for yourself there unless you've got some pretty significant ad dollars out of the gate. So not to deter you from it, but just to warn you, like, do not undertake a podcast lightly. Definitely have a go-to-market plan. Definitely have a process in place. So for guests, create a system for sourcing them. How are you getting guests? How are you booking guests? Do you have a guest packet that you can give them? Do you have a guest follow-up after they've been on the episode? What do you want them to do? For those things, I like to associate what do we need to actually accomplish, right? So if we have a system for sourcing guests, we have an intro letter, we have a pitch, we have connections, right? We have somebody who's responsible for that, speaking of talent, <clears throat> and all of that. No, oh, sorry. <clears throat> and then what will it take to do it? For that one, it will take time, right? You have to create a system. Hopefully, you already have people in your marketing department who can do it. You need to have the time in order to actually structure that process in a way that works the system for booking guests. You need to have calendar links, right? You do not want to get into a big like, when are you available? When are you available? When are you available? Kind of conversation with guests. You need to have a schedule. You need to have it scheduled out in a calendar format and you need to be booking guests on specific dates. Um, that feels obvious, but like I've watched people have podcasts before and they don't have that. Um, you need to have a questionnaire. You need to have intake questions. How are you standardizing the process? The only way you're going to get guests if you don't have a huge name huge name recognition in the market. The only way you're going to get guests at the beginning is by seeming a bigger, seeming like a bigger deal than you are, seeming very professional, 
here's what you have to expect, right? So a downloadable is great. We always link a downloadable. We have standardized email content that we send out when we do guest requests. We have email, a standardized email content that we send out when we do episode details that we're delivering. Uh, what are we asking them for? We're asking them for a headshot. We're asking them for a bio. Like, you have to think through and then templatize all of that because you'll be doing it over and over and over again. But you've got to do it once first <laughs> to start. And that's time, research, planning, and production. <clears throat> Guest packet, like I just talked about, is mostly about production. Guest follow-up is mostly about production for copywriting, content design, all that. And then for branding, right? So you need to make a final decision. You need to make decisions on branding. Um, obviously, this is taken from an active document. So you see that this is like a podcast that we were considering rebranding, but thinking about, yeah, what is the podcast brand? Is there a logo? Is there a name? How long is it going to be? Who's going to be on it? What are the figureheads? What is the description? All of the elements that go into branding a podcast, and you need to figure out time-wise who is involved in that decision from your team, how long do they have to make those decisions, um, and then ultimately when are you wanting to launch and then back up the process you know 10 weeks 12 weeks 20 weeks however long you need to actually get it done and then ideas right so this is going to essentially be who's creating the ideas where are we housing the ideas for episodes and for um you know making it better and for serializing and scheduling and all of the things right so how are we you know creating space for those ideas to live somewhere in our ecosystem where people can access and and have their contribution and then production. So this is definitely key. There are lots of, you know, software systems for podcasts. There are also a lot of podcast agencies. And this might be a good idea. I would say, like, pricing-wise, it's probably, like, 200 to, I don't know, $1,000 an episode, depending on how fancy the agency is and depending on what they do for you. So this includes, like, you know, you think about it. A podcast needs audio editing. You need audio bumpers, right? You need intro and outro. Um, if you're going to, you know, try to get some kind of revenue model going with sponsorships or ads or things like that, you need a plan for all of that. That's quite specific, right? The monetization of a podcast is a whole nother thing from the go-to-market of a podcast. So, you know, sometimes you can have an agency come along who will help you do that and will help you do the audio, who will help you do the thumbnails, help you do the distribution, all that kind of thing. But you certainly will pay um, a price for that and making sure that that's part of the consideration, right? So if you're vetting all the different kinds of podcast software, maybe you're also vetting some agencies just to compare apples to apples, see what the pricing models are like and see if it's worth it for you, depending on what you want the podcast to achieve for you in terms of business growth. Um, sweet graphics, right? <laughs> sweet graphics are just graphics that are sweet. Um, figuring out what are the wow designs, right? What's going to be eye-catching on a podcast player? What's going to be eye-catching on social media? What is the process going to be? So for instance, it would be very smart to launch a podcast to market with a marketing plan, not just for the podcast itself, but for each episode. So for each episode of the podcast, what is the marketing like, right? So let's say you have the podcast go live every Thursday. Are you sending an email out to your list on Tuesday? Are you posting about it on social on Monday and Wednesday? Do you do a follow-up afterwards and in case you missed it post? Like standardizing that process for marketing, not just the podcast at large, but the episodes themselves is hugely advantageous because it makes it builds predictability in you know the last thing your marketing department wants to do if you are not in the marketing department is to be blindsided by the request to do a podcast and then blindsided by ongoing requests to market that podcast right like it needs to be planned for and then planned for in the content production schedule planned for in the content calendar do not underestimate the amount of time that it takes to do all of that the piece I don't have in here that I just want to quickly mention, obviously, is technology. I feel like that goes without saying, so I don't really want to say it, but let's say it. You need to have the right tech. You got to have the right mics. You got to have the right video. You got to have the right, if you're going to be on video, which you should, um, you know, you got to have the right streaming. You've got to have all of these kind of tech components in place. So I strongly recommend you have somebody who is good with your MarTech, good with that kind of thing, um, you know, do their due diligence and research what's out there and make sure that you get the best to support what you want to do. And then last is distribution. So what is the optimized distribution plan, right? You have standardized um, content, right? So you figure out, all right, we've got, again, this kind of goes into like that marketing package per episode, but this is really more about getting it out in the world. You've got standardized captions that fit the word count for various podcast players. So like Apple is a little bit different word count wise than Spotify and all those kind of things. So you know exactly what your word count is like, and you've got a plan for all of the captions, the episode descriptions, the bullet points, um, the categories the tagging, all the things that go into actually getting the podcast distributed out through the various podcast players and channels. 
Um, and then figuring out, you know, what you're doing for transcripts. So podcast transcripts can be really valuable blog articles because they're chock full of good keywords. Um, you can easily create a system or an SOP in which you, so you have a content person on your team, go in and spin it in chat GPT, clean up the ums, you know, kind of do some of that. AI is a really good tool for that. But then where are you posting that? How are you posting that? Um, are you adding links to it? Are you optimizing it for SEO? Are you sharing the transcript in an email? So thinking about all the components, all the various types of collateral that you're extracting from the podcast itself and how you're leveraging those to gain more visibility. And then, of course, we talked very briefly, and I won't harp too much on this because it is such a different conversation, but the monetization method. So are you going to have a subscription model? Are you going to try to use Patreon? Are you going to try to upsell? Um, you know, for the most part, sponsors are not going to come on until you have a proven audience and until that audience is a certain size. But thinking about the monetization method of eventually selling sponsorships, selling ad spots, having um, some of that awareness, again, that's usually more down the road because you do have to prove numbers before you can usually attract, um, you know, meaningful players into that dynamic. But it's certainly something that you should launch with in mind because you want to be thinking about KPIs and thinking about what's on per what's important. So I strongly suggest that you attend to all of those elements, you set a deadline for launch, and then you reverse engineer, right? And if you've got to involve the right people, you've got to involve the right players, the right team members, the right all of the things, leaders, et cetera, and then figure out how long it's going to take to accomplish all of those various things, right? What are you going to put together for your website? How are you going to put um, you know, the podcast set up? What SOPs are you putting in place to make sure that all the content's being created? What kind of legal agreements do you need to have for IP, for the guests? Um, you know, How are you putting together all of that? And then what are your first four episodes, let's say? Right, and planning those inaugurally. Many people launch a podcast with early enthusiasm that wanes very quickly when they realize just how much work it is, how, much, how long it takes, how many hours they're going to have to spend investing in it and overseeing it and marketing it and all of that. You have to have a plan. If you have a plan, it's not going to be so overwhelming, but you need to proof of concept it. You need to make sure you have the audience for it, and then you need to make sure that your go-to-market is solid in place so that you have a repeatable structure. The last thing I'm going to show you is a podcast planner spreadsheet. Um, so this is one that we've used. Um, I honestly don't really remember where we got it or when we made it, but essentially what it does is it's got kind of a complete structure for filming, editing, publishing, and marketing, which are basically the four big activities you're going to do for every single podcast. Um, and then it's got, you know, tasks in place, recording checklists, um, some of that like idea parking lot stuff, um, concepting, right? Who would we do? You know, who would we have on here? What would our you know dates be? Things like that. And then it's got monthly planners. So you've got, okay, here's month one. And all of this populates once you go in here and actually set up your dates um, and all of that. So that's just an example of how you might want to structure a podcast editorial, making sure you've got goals in mind, making sure from day one, you know what you're measuring, right? That you're measuring listeners, followers, subscribers, whatever it may be, um, so that there's good justification for the dollars that are being put behind this effort. And it takes some time, right? You're not going to start day one and have thousands of listeners. You may have an early uptick at the very beginning when you launch just because players like that, like the podcast players, and they'll distribute it a little bit more liberally. But over time, you need to sustain that kind of interest, right? How are you going to do that effectively? The only way you're going to do any of this effectively is if you have a plan. So hopefully this was helpful to you. If you have launched a podcast, I would be interested to hear. Um, podcast horror stories are kind of like so fun and hilarious. So feel free to comment if you've dropped a podcast before. Share share podcasts. If you're like, hey, this is one that I've done that I think is really good. Um, you know, let's let's share the love and get people, you know, involved and engaged. Speaking of which, subscribe to my channel if you want more advice and tools and resources like this. And I am happy to help.